I love that I get to add to my book of life, just standing here trying to get batteries to work. So, But my talk starts basically when I was 18. My dad died suddenly at age 50. And my teenage life was just changed in an instant. And I didn't even have the chance to mourn the loss of my dad because we had to get the income flowing to support the family. So three of my, my mom and three of my seven siblings and I, we immediately went back to, to work in the family's women's accessory business. And luckily I had worked at their side since I was 12 years old, so I had a good grasp of the, basically the buying and the selling functions. And I was really active all through high school. I actually would get up at 5 a.m. and go to work for four hours, go to school, and then after class, I would go back to work. And I saw it as a great learning experience, and I truly, truly loved what I did. Two days after my dad's funeral, you guys, the IRS was locking the doors. That's when we found out that the business owed over $80,000 in back taxes. So we pulled together as a family and through goal setting and a really strong business plan, we, we inched our way from red to black and over time, but you know what, and eventually we, we earned millions in sales. And that's what I called my, my school of hard knocks. So lesson number one, whenever you are thrown into a tragedy that is so overwhelming where it just, you can't breathe, you know, I learned that if you take the focus off of you, put it onto others, and that you will be able to start to heal because you have a purpose. So, my mom always told me that we have a book of life, and our challenges, all that they are, are new chapters in our book, of uh, our personal book of life. So, back in, um, our oldest son, Cade, was born with severe arthritis, and he was told he'd be in a wheelchair by age 11. And living in Minnesota, we knew that dry weather could make a, a significant difference. So in 1998, when Cade was seven, along with his two brothers, Jake and Brock, we packed up in our motor home and we started our journey to look for relocation possibilities. Well, as we traveled through these, these dry states, we stopped in San Diego and visited a friend and she suggested that we look into Rancho Bernardo. Well, it ended up being perfect for him. So we ended up going back to Minnesota, sold our house immediately, and anything to do with warm weather or snow, and we relocated to Rancho Bernardo without any jobs or knowing what was next in our book of life. We knew it was the right decision, though, because he, he flourished tremendously, and he beat all odds to, to not be in a wheelchair. So we relocated, you guys, to San Diego. And you know what, we do tell Kate all the time, we're not happy you have arthritis, but we are so glad that you got us to move to San Diego. <laughs> so in October of 2000, uh, so in October of 2000, David and I, along with the three boys, we traveled back to Minnesota to celebrate my in-law's 50th wedding anniversary. You know, and it was so neat to see the boys falling back into being best friends with their cousins. Well, on our final night there, they were staying at their cousin's house, and after a ton of fun and laughter with friends and family, Dave and I finally fell into bed at 3 a.m. Well, at, when we were drifting off to sleep, we started getting these pings on our phone signifying that they were text messages from our kids saying that our entire neighborhood back home was on fire. And, you know, kids have a tendency to exaggerate a little bit, so we ignored their texts. Big, big mistake. We started getting the calls from adults and my, my friend Bridget said that as she was being forced to evacuate from the neighborhood, that she thought that she saw her house on fire. David and I, we looked at each other in horror. We said, there has to be some kind of mistake. You know, we, we didn't know what to think. You know, okay, so we're 2,000 miles away, our house is on fire, and we, we can't get anything out of the house. You know, and we just, we just kept thinking there has to be some kind of mistake. But all the while we were denying it, we knew that the calls from these adults back home, they were signifying a terrifying event. So we flipped on the TV and what we saw was astounding. You know, it, in spite of the valiant attempts from these firemen, this fire took on a life of its own, destroying hundreds of homes and buildings. We watched our friends on TV. They were being interviewed and they were tearfully describing that they were running out of their front door, 
while the back side of their house, you guys, it was engulfed with flames falling into the canyon. All they got out of, of their house was their, their pajamas and their slippers. You know, news reporters were talking about 60 to 80 mile an hour wind storms, where there were fireballs the size of basketballs just randomly dropping down on homes and starting them on fire. And we were also, we were watching Good Morning America, and our ne next door neighbors were being interviewed, and their house was completely gone. Well, the cameras, you guys, panned to the right, and that's when we saw it. Our house had not survived the firestorm from the night before. And all, all that was left you guys, was, a, was a heap of ash and a small brick facade. And I just, I couldn't breathe and I just, I, I, I couldn't even look at David and I just went, holy crap, our life has now changed forever. We'll never ever be the same. So as we traveled back to San Diego, we had no idea what was going to be what was going to be there for us. And what we saw in the next few days, you guys, irrevocably changed our lives forever. It was like a war zone. Our car and van had been parked in the driveway, burned to a crisp. It, the heat was so intense that it, it melted the engines. And, you know, and then what was so strange about the fire, only three homes on our street burned. Okay, and our son's truck was parked right in front of the house, right in front of the house, and it was in perfect condition. You know, and I turned around and I looked at the devastation. I said, you know what? This is not a new chapter in my book of life. This is a stinking novel, complete <laughs> with the footnotes, <laughs> you know, and the references, and I had a great cover photo. So, <laughs> you know, and, and it, what was so tough is everybody kept commenting that it was just stuff that burned. Well, you know what? It was a lot more than stuff. It was the stuff that triggered, you know, the touching memories from the past. It was the knickknacks that reminded me of my amazing honeymoon that I spent with my husband 32 years ago. My kids' artwork that from elementary school that I actually took the time to frame, hung it on the dining room walls, gone. And it's the photos and the family videos that are gone completely forever. You know, also, you know, it was stuff like the sassy shoes that I purchased in Vegas as a remembrance of my mom's 70th birthday. And the 180 pairs of shoes that I had collected through a lifetime. <laughs> <sighs> you know, there was a standing joke with, between myself and my fellow fire survivors. And they would say, oh, don't worry about Renee. You know, she was traveling when the fires happened, so she had seven pairs of her favorite shoes. <laughs> okay, guys, and I know you can't see it, but it is all about the shoes. <laughs> oh, it is fun. You know, as, as you heard, I definitely, definitely like my shoes. So, you know, but, but moving forward, there was so much more that went on than just the stuff. You know, we, we found out that we were severely underinsured. You know, we, we were covered for $70 a square foot, okay? And we weren't the only ones, quite a few people. You know, to rebuild in Southern California, you guys, it costs over $200 per square foot. So, you know, adding that, you know, financial burden on top of literally losing everything, it was pretty hard to bear. And I had, looking forward, I had to figure out how am I gonna get through this? And that's when I started drawing on my rich history of over 25 years as a, as, as a business owner, an entrepreneur, you know, and even a, a mom and a wife. And with 1,100 homes burned and thousands of lives just turned upside down and changed forever, you know, I, I remembered my motto, when something bad happens, take the, go do something good for somebody else, take the focus off of you and it will give you purpose so you can start to heal. And that's why my, my girlfriend Catherine and I started our nonprofit support group called Fired Up Sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and it consisted of over 400 women that lost their homes. And we started out, yes, as a support group, but because so many of us were severely underinsured, we turned into a strategic buying group. I would visit businesses and and very aggressively negotiate discounts 
with the commitment that we all come back and buy from those retailers. I saw it as a win-win situation. And the commitment of these wonderful, my fellow Fired Up sisters, we collected an enormous amount of donations from many companies where we had to open a 5,400 square foot warehouse. <laughs> yeah, one more thing for me to take care of. So, <laughs> but what was so neat that together as a team, um, we dispersed over $5 million worth of money, goods, and services to the fire survivors. You know, and it, it just is amazing what you can end up doing as a team. My girlfriend Maureen taught me how to accept help. Um, she would take a couple things off my task uh, every single day, and she would never ever allow me to say that I'm okay, I don't need any help. And you know, in retrospect, we all need to have a Maureen in our life. Life lesson number two, allow others to help. Yay! Yay. <laughs> As I let you go. You know, but you guys, prior to the fires, I would never ask for help or accept help. And you know, I actually found that, you know, it is just so rewarding to be able to allow people to help. I, I found out that not accepting help, it's actually very selfish and very prideful. Learning to accept help is such a blessing and it honors the giver, you know, and, and from that time, life did move on, and four months after the fires, I started another chapter in my book of life. I was diagnosed with cervical cancer, and uh, um, consequently, I had to have a partial hysterectomy. Well, and since I was a, a breast cancer survivor seven years prior, I knew without a doubt that I, that I would survive this, you know, and my boys were having their own crises, so right after my hysterectomy, my Brock broke his leg severely and couldn't walk for six months, okay? And then Cade got in a motorcycle accident and broke his back and shattered four vertebrae. And, and I'll tell you, I actually told my other two guys that I was gonna wrap him in bubble wrap if they didn't <laughs> be careful. <laughs> you know, and that leads to life lesson number three. You and I, we are so much stronger than we think. You know, and I, I look at op challenges and obstacles that it's just lessons, you know, f for us to get better in life. And if it wasn't for those challenges, I would not be who I am today. You know, I know, you know, for me, losing everything, it changed me to the core. And, you know, I had to ask myself, how much stuff do we really need? And that led to rebranding our credit card processing company. And we rebranded it to Pay It Forward Processing which led to launching our give back program, Every Swipe Benefits Charity. And with the, at the end of our second year of our give back program, we donated over $100,000 to charity. And it all started from losing everything. You know, and as I look forward, I just say, you know what? I truly am standing here today having survived all of it. And I know without a doubt that as we approach those challenges and obstacles, you guys remember that it is just a, it's just the lessons to get you better in your, in your life struggles. Mm -hmm. So I know without a doubt that I am a stronger person. My faith has grown. I know God has a plan. You know, and I learned how to be a survivor and a thriver, never a victim. Was it easy? No. No, it wasn't. But I know without a doubt that you can rise to the top. You know, you can rise out of the ashes and flourish through adversity. And I want to leave you with this question. What is going to be your next chapter in your book of life? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh.